Well, tonight we're going to continue, brothers. We're going to continue with our teaching uh, by faith. Uh, we're going to continue with part three. So today we're going to start off with 2 Corinthians 5, 7. As we review a little bit, we'll get into the word. Uh, but I want to start with this verse. This is a very powerful verse. Uh, it's, it's, in the, it's up there, as you can see. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Uh, we, you know, we walk by faith, right? Not by sight. And of course, in context, it's talking about the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, we don't walk by what we see, brothers. Uh, before Christ, we were so used to walking by our senses. You know, uh, we were used to walking by what we saw. And a lot of times, you know, as we forget who we serve, we fall back into that. You know, and, and we call it the flesh. We call back into the flesh. Uh, you know, just to review. Uh, the less time we spend with the Lord, the more time we're going to spend with the flesh. It's, it's truth. You know, uh, you can only serve one master. So the more time we spend uh, or spend away from the Lord, of course, our, we're going to depend on our senses because we are not going to have anything to draw from. The, you know, I mean, the Holy Spirit is in us, but how many know that that relationship is what's needed? To carry on, to carry forth. You know, um, as I was looking at this picture here, I love it because it has a trail, and, and it's so true. You know, I, I thought about looking for, for a smooth road, uh, but I go, no, that's the Christian life. If you look at it, you know, it's very narrow, and there's a lot of obstacles or challenges along the way. You know, there's, it's, it's a very, the Christian life is a very rocky uh, uh, path. However, I remember one time I was, I was praying and I was asking the Lord, I go, Lord, you know, and this was early in my, in my, in my uh, faith. I was asking him, Lord, what are all these trials for? You know, uh, as soon as we come to you, there's a honeymoon season, but then hu that honeymoon season is, is, is gone. And here comes the trials. What are they for? And of course you learn through time that it's to build you up. It's to build your faith Right? To build your faith in him, your trust in him. Right? Because a, a, a trial, uh, you know, a challenge, it, it can either be a stepping stone or a stumbling block. What are you going to choose to make it? Because it's a, obviously, it's up to us, brothers. Are we going to allow the enemy to, to trick us and so we can fall and we're going to end up staying there? You know, that, that's a stumbling block. Or are we going to allow the Holy Spirit in us to teach us what, what we're going through is for? And that will become a stepping stone, right? We go from glory to glory, brothers. So last week, or I'm sorry, last month we stayed uh, with part three, which is what does faith produce, brother? What, what does it produce? I mean, because... I know I'm living the faith. If I believe in, in, in our Lord and Savior Jesus, and I have accepted him as my Savior, I know I'm living the faith. And, and, but, but what is faith? You know, we, we, uh, just to re, uh, review a little bit, we, we've learned that faith is trusting in the Lord, no matter the circumstances. And, and we've learned that, you know, the more time we spend with him, the more our trust, our, the more our faith will increase. Because our trust will increase in him. Because we see how faithful he is. And we see that he's not a liar. You know, we know that every word that he speaks will come true or has become true. And we know that as he speaks that into our lives, we know that he's, he's, he's not going to lie. We know that if he said it, it will happen, brothers. Every word written in this book will happen. You know, I don't care. You can get any other book in the world, but it does not compare because this is life. As I mentioned before, and we've mentioned before, it's not just ink on paper. This is life. You know, and as we read it by the, by, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, guess what? The truth is revealed to us. And you know what that does? That works out our salvation. That works out our spirit in us where we learn to trust God. You know how a baby, when they're walking, brothers, when they start off, they're wobbly, right? And, and, they, and, they, and they, you help them out a little bit. And as time goes on, you help them out less and less and less. Well, that's what the Lord does to us. At first, he's right there with you. He's right there. You know, if you fall, he's going to catch you. But as time goes on, he's got to let you go. And we might fall once or twice, but you'll learn. Amen? We're going to learn. And, and you know what? As I mentioned in the beginning, 
His promise is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. You know, I forget who's, who mentioned, I believe, I don't know if you mentioned it, Pastor, but I know that uh, I, I've heard it recently where, you know, when, when is a teacher the quietest? You know, those of you that are in education, you know what I'm talking about? When is the teacher the quietest, the most quietest? During a test. Amen? During a test. So when we go through a trial, it seems like, where are you, God? Where are you? I can't feel your presence. But he's there. If you belong to him, he is there. You see this? And it's that, that's building your faith up. So what does... Um, Faith produces, brothers, in our lives. Faith produces courage to do God's will. Um, we find courage when we trust in his power and his character and who he is. You know, as we learn the word, we learn about God. And we learn who he is and what he's capable of. You know, uh, is there anything impossible for the Lord? The word declares that there is nothing, nothing impossible for the Lord. According to his will, it will be done because there is nothing impossible for him. It's impossible for us, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. Amen? And, and of course, it's all in our faith. Are we going to trust him for that? You know, as we pray, as we pray for others, are we trusting in him or are we trusting in our own strength? Because if we're trusting in our own strength, we're going to fail. You see that? And that's what happens a lot of times in ministry, brothers. That's what happens a lot of times when we serve God. We're out there in our own strength, right? Not depending on God, but depending on our talents, our natural talents, depending on our strength. And then when the trial comes, we fall. Because we're not grounded and rooted in the truth. You see this? And honestly, we're not grounded in his love. Remember, we're going to learn that power, strength, comes from our love for him. You see this? In 2 Timothy 1.7, the word declares, For God has not given us the spirit of timidity, but power, love, and self-control, self-minded. Okay? So verse 8 says, So do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord or of me, his prisoner. This is Paul. Instead, join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. How many times have you heard that out there by televangelists? Join me in the suffering. How many times have you heard it? I've, I've never heard it. I've never heard it once. But this is so true. You know, those that desire to live a holy life will suffer persecution. We will suffer one way or another, brothers. And we see it all around us more now, now more than ever. So what is he preparing us for? Because obviously he's preparing his church for something that's coming. He's preparing us. To walk by faith and not by what we see. I don't care what you see on the news. I don't care what you see out there. Brothers and sisters, my God has not ceased to be who he is. My God has not ceased to be the, the Lord of the Bible. Who, who's in the Bible? Who's, this book is written about him. About our, our Lord, Yahweh. He has not ceased to be I am. So... He hasn't given us a spirit of Timothy. You know, when, when I, as I mentioned in the beginning, I was a very uh, a shy individual growing up. And, 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 and uh, it kept me from a lot of things to the point where it built, um, you know, it built not only shyness, but insecurity. It built that in me. And, and I learned even, even through high school. And, and it wasn't until I, you know, I gave my life to the Lord. Because even in the, in the military, you know, there was things that, I mean, once I was out there, I was fine. But if I had to give a presentation or something, I, didn't, I couldn't do it. It wasn't until I came to the Lord that he started showing me his strength. His, because of his love and, and because of his anointing, it built that courage. Because when I speak, I don't speak about my, myself. I speak about him. And how many know that there's that that, that is a privilege and, and, and there's nothing like speaking about him? Amen. So how how can I not speak? How can I say words? How can I speak to you, brothers? How can I not speak to you about him? Amen. He is such an awesome God, brothers. You know, and you see it through 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 the Bible. You see all these uh, normal people. All these people were normal. David was normal. You know, Paul was a normal individual. But it was an anointing in them. Amen? It is the anointing in them 
that brought them to do what they did for the Lord and to overcome. Now, Acts 1 8, very powerful promise, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power to speak His word, power to speak His mysteries, power to, you know what, go out there and be that disciple. Be that, that, that brother that, that shares the word of God. You don't have to be a preacher. We're all preachers. We all, God has appointed us to declare his word, brothers and sisters, in season and out of season. Whether you, you are ready or not, in other words, whether you feel like it or not. As Christians, how many of you wake up and say, well, I feel like a Christian today? <laughs> we don't. Let's be honest. Let's, we don't. But we walk by faith. Not by what we feel. Not by what we see. I know that God is real. And I know that I know because I know, because I know I gave my life to Christ. I know that. You see, salvation is not based on me. Salvation is not, your salvation is not based on you. Although the enemy likes to make you think that. He likes, he loves to make you think that your salvation is based on yourself and your works. It's not based on our works, brothers. You know, remember why works come. Works come because we are saved. Amen. We don't get saved by our works. You see this. But when you are saved, they automatically come. Why? Because you want to do everything and anything possible. You, you want to, you know, uh, uh, conquer the world for Christ. Amen? So that's what the power that he's talking about. Power to be a witness. Power to speak his word. You know? Yes, we do our part and we study to show that self approved unto God. Not unto man, unto God. In other words, we dig and we dig through this Bible and, and you know, it's hard labor. But it's awesome, beautiful, loving labor. It's a, it's a beautiful devotion when you learn, you know, and he'll teach you. That's the beautiful part about it. You don't have to be a scholar, brothers and sisters. All you have to do is just love him. And he will teach you his word. And he will teach you how to be a witness to others. Amen? And, and you'll see. Some of you in here have witnessed for years. Some of you have never witnessed at all. But how many know that our greatest, the greatest people we need to witness to is our own four walls? That's where it starts. Because it does, isn't, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't matter if I'm the most eloquent preacher and, and I go and preach in Africa if my house is a mess. You see this. So first I have to honestly be an example to my children, to my spouse, and honestly to you, my family, my church family. You see this. So, and, and, and how is that possible? How can we do that? Well, again, by the Spirit, not by our own strength. Amen? So he will give you the strength to walk this holy life, to, to be a witness. 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18 declares, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear invo involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. In other words, they have not experienced, they have not fully experienced his love. You know, anybody that's afraid, anybody that, 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 that claims to be a Christian and is living a fearful life, brothers and sisters, has not experienced his full love. Because love drives out darkness. I mean, you see it, right? You go to your house. What's the first thing you do when you walk in? Turn on the light. What does the light do, brothers and sisters? It repels darkness, does it not? Okay, now, metaphorically speaking, love is that light. You see this? Spiritually speaking, when, you, when Christ is in you, that's what Christ does in your life. It drives away that darkness. It drives away that, 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 that uh, everything that's of the enemy. Unforgiveness, hate, bitterness, all that stuff. That's in our heart that does not allow us to worship our Lord as he should be worshipped. Guess what? When we turn on the light, love casts out fear. Love casts out sin. Amen? That's the one thing the enemy can never wrap his head around. Love. You see, he thought about how to honestly overcome God. <laughs> can you believe that? He thought about that. He planned it out. 
But he, he didn't realize one thing. You know, all the strategic planning and everything else that the enemy does, and, and he plans, believe me. He, oh, he's a planner, brothers. He is a planner. I'll tell you, he's a slick devil. But he does not compare. He does not compare to the glory of God. He does not compare to the love of God. And that's why the enemy will never overcome, because it's about love. Agape love, amen? So, one of the, you know, as I was meditating, as I was thinking, brothers, and I was, okay, so, when I have perfect love in me, and, and, and that's Christ in me, that will drive me to go and speak to others about him. You know, that will drive me to go and if he tells me to, honestly, we've been talking about Africa. If he calls me to Africa, I'm going to go out there. Not because of me, but because he has a plan for me. And I know that I'd rather honestly die in his will than out of his will. But, so I was thinking about that, right? And this passage came to mind. Daniel 3.16. Let's turn there. Let's, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 16. And I'm going to bring you uh, to this point where, where we're going to start speaking, or we're going to read uh, 3.16 here. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 16. Um, this was um, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had built a big golden idol, a tall idol, right, of himself. Uh, a very tall, tall idol. And he had commanded all the people, brothers, and for those of you that have not read the story, he had, he had commanded everybody in his kingdom to bow down as soon as they started playing music, which is worshiping the idol. Think about it. Because they were playing all kinds of instruments onto this idol. They were, they were dedicating this idol. And, 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 and it was, you know, they were, they were uh, and they had commanded everybody, you will bow down as soon as you start hearing music. Okay. And this is where we're at right now. These three young men did not bow down. So all the magicians and all the, you know, all, all these uh, supposedly wise men came and told uh, the king, hey, king, these three guys, man, that, that you just appointed, you just appointed them, you know, as wise men, they're not bowing down. Right? They, they were looking for a promotion or something. So this is where we pick up. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. Very famous, very famous uh, story. But I want, you to sh I want you to see their courage. I want you to see the Spirit of God in them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King ne Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Verse 17, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Notice that courage. Notice that courage. Notice that respect. I mean, they're talking to the king. Even though this king at the time was not, you know, uh, a man of God. You know, he set up this, this idol, and he had, again, commanded everybody to bow down. If they didn't bow down, he was going to throw them in the furnace. And we all know what happens. But what I want you to see is look at this courage. This courage can only be of God. What, what, what do they tell the king? Listen, hey, we're not going to bow down. The God that we serve will deliver us. And you know what? Even if he doesn't, we know it's his will for, for us to get thrown in the furnace, and we're still going to trust him. How many of you will say that? How many of you will say that in the time that's coming? Because there's coming a time, brothers, where they will say, put this mark. Bow down to this mark. Will you take it? I mean, if we're here. Will you bow down to the system? Because this was a government at that time. And I'm not preaching anti-government or none of that stuff, because I work for the government. So I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking, let's go and, and become anti, you know, government, you know, no. No, 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 I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. 
Let me make that perfectly clear. But what I am saying, though, if it comes down to it and I have to choose, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to choose my Lord. You see this? That's what I'm saying. Because there is coming a time where the people are going to have to choose. You see this? And you know what? It's, it's, it's good to, for us to learn this so we can honestly teach it to our family members. You see this? To our children. That when it comes down to it, if you have to make a choice between the world and Jesus, choose our Lord. He is faithful. We know what happens next. We know that these three children, three uh, uh, young men were thrown into the furnace. And we know that, the, that Nebuchadnezzar uh, increased the heat seven times worse. And we know that the guys that threw uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were burned themselves as they were throwing them, casting them into the furnace. The soldiers were burned and they died. They got fried. But how many know that um, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not even a hair and their head was burned they're, when they came, you know, as they were in there, the king said, wait a minute. Why, why do I see four guys? I thought we only threw three guys in there. Why, is, why are there four guys walking around the furnace? And one of them looks like the son of God. Because it was Jesus. Amen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I don't care what you see. I don't care how hot the fire is. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why? Because I love you. I died for you while you were a sinner. How much more am I not going to take care of you now that you're mine? You see this? Don't walk by what you see. The enemy has trained us to walk according to his word, to the point where we neglect Jesus' word. You see this? We have been so trained, brothers, and, and, and we've been so honestly, you know, wound up by the world system. That we are not shining our light. We are not operating in his word. And that's why we're running around afraid. And we're walking around by what we see. You know, and we're all guilty of it. Let's be honest. Worrying, depression, right? And this is in the church. This is in the church. How can we go and pray for others if we ourselves Need that prayer. You see, our God is a God of deliverance. Amen? We're not trusting him. We're not trusting, trusting him for that deliverance. We're not trusting him for that, you know, uh, I don't care what's in our life, what's blocking our relationship. We're not trusting for him to remove that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they trusted the Lord. And they said, whether we perish or don't, we're going to trust in him. But we're not going to bow down to that golden image. So faith produces courage. Look at David, right? And, and, and I believe I'm going to get into David, but where did he get that courage from? I mean, he didn't just run up and face Goliath from one day to the next, there was time that God prepared him. How I many know that God's preparing you? God's preparing you, brothers, right now. We're all at different stages. But God is preparing each and every one of us in here. You see this? He's preparing us to what's coming. He's preparing us. He's preparing you for your next chapter, brothers. So, What's the next thing? Very quickly. Faith produces strength, brothers. It produces that hope for us to carry on. James 1, 2, right? James, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2, declares, Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Now, this, this is a very hard verse. Not hard, but surprising verse when, when, when the first time, one of the few, first few times that I read this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. When you encounter trials of many kinds. That sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? To the world. To the world. Consider it joy when I'm going through trials? Really? Why? How many of you are jumping out of your skin because you can't pay your bills or 
because you just found out that you had a certain condition from the doctor. Not me. But that's what the Lord commands us to do or encourages us to do. Why? Why would our Lord encourage us to consider it pure joy? You know why? Because he is such a loving God that he knows the outcome. And he's telling you, trust me. Just give me, give it to me and watch what I'll do to glorify me. See, you said I, you were mine. This is the Lord speaking. You said you were mine. So through your life, my name is going to be glorified. You see this? We forget that we are not our own. We don't belong to us. We forget that. I know we do. We belong to him. So when we said I do, it's kind of like when we get married and we say I do, now I belong to her, right? I'm not going to go out there and do the things I used to do or go date other women because I belong to my wife. The minute I say I do, I'm hers and she's mine. The same thing with the Lord. When we said, Lord, I receive you as my Savior, guess what? We don't belong to the world, brothers. We belong to Christ. So if it means going through trials to glorify him, so be it. But the beautiful part about our Lord is that, you know what? Again, he's not going to give you more than what you can handle. He's going to prepare you. You see this? If you allow him, he will prepare you for the battle. A lot of times... We're not prepared because we have not allowed ourselves to be prepared. We have said no, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit trying to prepare you, trying to speak to you. But we're so busy, brothers. We're so busy with the things of the world. And, and, and it's, it's, not, it's not bad things. It's not, we're not out there drinking in the bars or, you know, or, or doing what we used to do. But we're so busy with our own life. And again, this is not legalistic. This is just to remind you that we belong to him. And we're here to serve him. And that, you know what? If you want to try, uh, you want to find true rest and you want to find true peace, it's found in him. You know, I believe the pastor mentioned uh, Mary and Martha last week. Remember, Mary was, one, was the one that found the peace. Martha was trying to please him by everything she was doing that she was going crazy. All right? And, and, and sometimes we do that. We act like Martha instead of Mary. You know, we need to rest at his, at his feet, honestly. That is where you find perfect peace. To do what he has called you to do. You see this? When we're running around like Martha, we're not a blessing to anybody. I think we're a curse, right? Sometimes. Honestly, I think we're a burden to people sometimes when we're, not, when we're running around crazy like, like a chicken with his head cut off. Right? We think we're being a blessing, but we're, we're creating more problems sometimes. But, again, he's a beautiful God. And his mercies are new every day. Right now where you're at, brothers and sisters, talk to him. Just tell him, right now, where you're at. He, knows, he already knows what's going on in your life. He already knows what's, what's burdening you. Give it over to him. Faith produces strength. Romans 5.3. Not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Notice that. It's called the confident expectation. In other words, as we're going through these trials, it produces uh, perseverance. It, help, it, it, it helps us as we, we, we're going through this trial and we read his word and, and we see what others have gone through. I, I know Pastor mentioned it last week also that... Uh, you know, as we share our testimony, it encourages us. It encourages one another, brothers and sisters. 
You know, as we, as we learn that you have been healed and delivered, wow, if he did it for him, he could do it for me. You know, uh, again, and I use this testimony because it's powerful. It never gets old. You know, everybody knows my wife and I were unable to have children. Fifteen years we had been married, no children. How many know that God is faithful? And he gave us not one, but two babies, amen? And, and here they are. I mean, we've been married uh, 25 years now. God is faithful. God is faithful. If he did it for me, he could do it for someone else that, that's not able to have babies. Why? Because he is a loving God. He knows the desires of our hearts. He knows what, what, you know, what, what keeps us awake at night, brothers and sisters. Amen? But these trials and these, this, this sometimes uh, that we go through in life, they're to build us up. Again, it's, it's to, and honestly, a lot of times it takes a trial for us to get into his word. And it shouldn't, but that's when we learn who he is. And we realize that, you know what, he's not going to leave me where I'm at. Amen? Amen? So, as I mentioned, uh, David, King David. 1 Samuel 17, 33, this is when Saul told David, you're not, you know, when he told him that he's not able to go against Goliath. I love the way he answers in verse 34, 1 Samuel 17, 34. David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has uh, taunted the armies of the living God. And then he said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Again, experience, right? God is going to prepare you. These Trials, this, you know, the bear, the lion, they represent trials, brothers. They represent the enemy coming against you. You know, how many of you can look back in your life and look at the challenges that God has brought you through? You know, and, and that makes you stronger. Amen? That makes you uh, want to persevere because you, you think back and you say, if God delivered me from that, I know he can deliver me from this. I know he can. Because you know what? We're serving the same God. God is not weak. He has not, you know, lost his strength. So, as David, we can say, the Lord that delivered me from this trial, you know what? He's going to deliver me from this trial. But as I'm here, as I'm going through it, Lord, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Help me to see what this is for. Amen? Give me the courage. Give me the strength to carry on. How many you know that faith produces victory? When we learn to rely on God, and we learn to trust in the Lord, right? We will see the victory. That's his promise. Now, a lot of times the victory might not seem, might not be what we're thinking, but there will be victory. There will, you know, if you allow, his name will be glorified. First Peter 1.6 First Peter chapter 1, verse 6, brothers. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is all this for? What is our life for? To glorify Jesus. Amen? It's to glorify the Lord. Again, the Christian life, it's not a smooth sail sailing. Whoever promised, promised you better roses was lying to you. But there is peace on the path. And he will deliver you. Amen? He will deliver you. 
However, we need to rest in him. We need to learn how to rest in him. James 1.12 declares that blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen? To those that love him. Notice that. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. Blessed are you. Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. You know that many, many Jewish soldiers would prepare for battle. And how many know that as long as they were being obedient to God, they had the victory, right? How many know that when they were in disobedience, right, they were defeated? And you see that over and over and over. Doesn't that happen in our lives? Uh, even, even when we're going through, even when we are in his will, brothers, and, and, and we're going through the trial, uh, that doesn't mean God's punishing us. Again, there's a difference. He's strengthening us. And there will be a victory. As we prepare our horse for battle, the deliverance belongs to the Lord. Victory belongs to the Lord, brothers. It's not on us. Again, it's on his strength. It's on who he is. 1 Corinthians, and with this I close, 1557. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory, victory through your own strength. Is that what it says? He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Aren't you glad that, again, your salvation and your, your walk in Christ is not Depend upon your, yourself. It, it doesn't depend upon who you are, your strength, but it depends on him. Amen. Our job is just to surrender to him. Our job is to honestly. And how do you surrender to him? Because a lot of times that, that seems like way out there, right? As, you know, I've got to surrender my will and this and that. Very easy. One simple word. Right? Maybe two. Love him. That's it. Nothing hard about it. And you know what's beautiful about loving him? That if he ask you, I mean, I'm sorry, if you ask him to give you love for him, guess what he's going to do? He's going to give you love for him. But we need to ask. See, if you feel cold, if your heart has grown cold, and you don't feel that love no more for him, or you don't feel love for the things of God, right? Because we all go through seasons Brothers and sisters, the word says, you have not because you ask not. We need to ask. To say, Lord, I mean, you see David. David asked, renew my strength, Lord. Restore my relationship with you, Lord. To when I first, you know, uh, restore my spirit within me. He's a loving God. He's waiting with open arms. All we have to say, Lord, restore me unto you. Restore that love. That I once felt for you and your thing and, and the things of God. Brothers and sisters, walking in faith is walking in love. Not the love of the world. Because the Bible declares that the love of the world is temporary. But the love of God is eternal. Amen? Let's walk in eternal love. That can only be accomplished. And that can only come by the Holy Spirit.